So today I'm going to show you how to do freeze pump thawing. Uh, and this is a technique for degassing solvents, or uh, in this case, I'm degassing uh, my reaction mixture. So a couple things that you're going to need before you get started with your freeze pump thaw. Um, I have here two different reactions in Schlink flasks, Schlink tubes actually, so I'll, I'll show you those. There's my reaction. Uh, Schlink tube is a pretty basic piece of glassware, but basically we have an opening here that's shut, and then we also have an opening uh, with a stopcock that's connected to my Schlink line. Um, so. A couple other things that you're going to need is uh, a high vacuum setup, a Schlink line, and a doer of liquid nitrogen as well. Uh, so to get started, I have both of my Schlink tubes connect to my Schlink line, and both of the stopcocks are closed, so they're closed to the Schlink line. So the first thing that we can do is open these lines up to vacuum. Uh, the contents of the tube will not be opened up to vacuum again because the stopcock is closed. So I'm going to do that for both of them here. So again, just our, uh, our vacuum tubing is under vacuum, but the Schlink tube is not. All right, and then we're gonna start the freeze pump thaw. Um, so by the name, you can probably tell that the first thing we're gonna do is freeze the contents of the Schlink tubes. So I'm putting them into a doer of liquid nitrogen. And that's gonna take a minute or two to freeze. Uh, the solvent of my reaction mixture is toluene. Um, and while we're doing that, I'll kind of explain how this works. So the, the purpose of a freeze pump thaw is to get all of the air uh, and specifically the oxygen that could be bad for a reaction out of the reaction mixture. So we freeze the solvent and after the solvent is frozen, we're going to open the stopcocks out to vacuum. So basically uh, removing the headspace in these Schlink tubes. And then after uh, we've exposed the, the tubes to vacuum for about five minutes in our case, we're gonna close the stopcocks back up, take the tubes out of the liquid nitrogen, and then thaw them in a water bath. Um, and what we will end up seeing is that um, by thawing them, the all of the gas that was dissolved in the solvent uh, will bubble out back into the evacuated headspace. Uh, and then we'll repeat that process a few more times. And this is a good way to get all of the gas both in the headspace and that's dissolved in your reaction or your solvent out. All right, so we're back after a couple minutes of freezing. I'll take these out of the liquid nitrogen just briefly to show you what we're actually looking at. So you can see that the whole reaction mixture is now frozen uh, and before it thaws, I put it back in the liquid nitrogen. So now that that reaction mixture is frozen, I'm gonna open up both of these stop packs to the slink line. So now both of the tubes are under vacuum uh, and we're evacuating any gas that might be in the headspace of the reaction. Uh, and I think this is uh, fairly obvious, but again, the, the reason that we are freezing is because if we open these flasks up to vacuum without freezing, um, all of the solvent would just boil off, obviously, and that's not what we want. So we're gonna evacuate the Schlink tubes for five minutes, and uh, I'll come back after that. All right, these tubes have been five minutes under vacuum, so now we are going to close them off to the vacuum and then transfer them from the liquid nitrogen to a water bath so that they can thaw. 
and as you can see or maybe not see the as they're fine there's a lot of bubbling coming up from the solution and that's all the dissolved gas that was in the toluene um, so it, it's pretty crazy but there's a lot of dissolved gas and that's uh, going back up into the headspace of the tube and this is why we do the freeze pump thaw three times uh, so three cycles of freeze pump thawing it's because we just evacuated the headspace but now there's a lot more gas back in the headspace so we'll do another two freeze pump thaws to remove all of that gas all right so these are done thawing now and we've completed one cycle of freeze pump thawing and we have two to go so again we're just going to go back into the freeze as you can see uh, the reaction mixture is now totally thawed and the Schlink tube is closed to vacuum uh, and it should always be closed to vacuum of course when uh, the reaction mixture is thawed. So we're going to put both of these Schlink tubes back into our liquid nitrogen doer so that we can freeze again. And I'll fast forward through some of these parts but we're doing the exact same thing that I showed initially. So. Uh, we're going to freeze, uh, and then once the reaction mixture is frozen, we'll pump on the mixtures for five minutes and then thaw and do that cycle one more time. So we have just finished the five minutes on the last pump of the last freeze pump thaw cycle. So again, just like the first time, I'm ready to thaw. So I'm going to close the stopcocks and transfer these from the liquid nitrogen doer to the water. Uh, and now these are fine. So both of the stopcocks are closed uh, and these lines are currently under vacuum, but we're gonna back fill with nitrogen so we can switch back from vacuum to nitrogen. So now these vacuum lines are filled with nitrogen. Uh, currently the tubes are totally uh, degassed. So we have our reaction mixture in there, but the tubes are under vacuum. Uh, and if you wanted to just degas, you could disconnect the vacuum lines right now and you'd have degas solvent or a degas reaction mixture. But uh, in my case, I'm interested in running this reaction under nitrogen. So uh, I'm going to backfill with nitrogen. So as I said before, the vacuum lines uh, are currently filled with nitrogen, so all we have to do to backfill with nitrogen is open the stopcocks. So I'll do that one at a time. So that has now been filled with nitrogen. And I'll do it with the second tube as well. So the second tube has been filled with nitrogen. And again, I'm going to close both stopcocks. And at this point, you can disconnect the Schlink tubes from the vacuum lines. The Schlink tubes are filled with nitrogen. There should be no oxygen present, uh, and you're good to set up whatever reaction you want. <laughs> 